Okay, great. So welcome everybody to our afternoon session in room A at OFSO 2022. So it's my pleasure to announce our next speaker, who is Ali Shukur, who is going to talk about the dynamics of Birkhoff sums. Please, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, thank you also for nice invitation uh, to present this work. My work entitled The Dynamics of Berghoff Sums. And this work joined with the Professor Antonevich and Kiro Jagin from Moscow and Belarusian State University. So uh, I will start from very simple fact that, uh, okay, I think we don't have a universal uh, definition to dynamical system. So we have some element in. in such environment moving during time. Okay, this dynamical system. So the first book, our first monography was uh, entitled by dynamical system was written by Dega. So this is a very simple fact, maybe. And I will go to Berger. I noticed some fact that uh, uh, in topological, or I mean topological uh, Space also in topological space we have continuous map and this map may generate a cascade dynamical system for a function p we have I don't hear anything anymore. I have the same issue. Excuse me. So we have difficulties to hear anything. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, I can hear you again now. Okay, you can hear me again because I may have some problem with my technique. Okay, so at the moment it's possible to hear you. Just okay. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So for negative M, we have this guy, and we are especially interested in the maximum of uh, uh, P nx, I mean, for big of sum. So we are interested in this maximum. And this maximum, in fact, is studied by uh, a lot of mathematicians like Fumin, Hardy, Arnold, and Kitok, and also Honen and Simi. So let's forget about uh, Bag of sums for a few minutes and go to uh, apparatus in Banach space and analytic function defined on resolvent cells called resolvent operator. And uh, if the uh, operator, norm of operator, satisfy this condition, we have power bounded operator. And we have here a uh, weighted shift operator. And uh, it's very simple. The shift operator multiplied by a function or matrix valued function. Um, now we redefine weighted shift operator on the unit circle. Uh, when the shift, shift operator acts like, uh, I mean, acting on the uh, unit circle uh, with angle to P ash uh, and multiplied by this function, A. So this, this guy will we called weighted shift operator generated by rotation. So we have rotation on the unit circle. And uh, I will just, I know this very, um, Known for everyone that if uh, ash is uh, Russian number, so on the unit circle, uh, the point will goes after some time to the same um, to the same point to where it is started. But if we have a Russian number, so uh, the point moving on the unit, or I mean rotating on the unit circle, will never go to the same place again. So, okay, and the product of, sorry, the product of uh, here, I mean, uh, we see here this product, this represents, this represents the uh, powers of operator. So you mean by this one, the power of operator. 
So uh, maximum of this guy is the norm of powers. Is the norm of powers. In 1973 was, mm, no, I mean, I'm from Paris, you got some result that uh, if H is Russian number, so we have that the spectrum of the um, operators of phase shift operator is uh, is this set, and if I sh in Russian number, so uh, the spectral radius is this. I mean, is the geometric average of A, and it's uh, happened by this formula. So this formula is the formula of spectral radius of phase shift operator. So now we have that uh, spectral radius in three, I mean, if this, yeah, I mean, we will say that the spectral radius is equal to uh, one, then this integral is equal to zero. And we have that the limb of the normal, the powers of the operator is equal to this guy. And you see this phi and E can be related to Berghoff sums. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I may be a little, I don't know if I'm a quick or not, but uh, you know, I will continue. So uh, if we have Russian number, so the powers of operator of weighted shift, I mean the powers of weighted shift operator uh, located in this uh, inequality, so it's between spectral radius uh, and uh, see here some results related to this fact. Also, also the, I will say that uh, this problem, I mean, this issue in general is related to aspects in uh, particle to homological equation. So it's related to homological equation and homological equation is interesting because it was cited in uh, the fifth Hilbert's problem, okay? I won't talk about uh, Fitz Hilbert's problem. I just will. I just, uh, I'm going forward. So in 75, uh, actually, I'm always interested in showing this two page paper because in my PhD time, it was very hard to uh, study this paper. Uh, so it was. Uh, by Gordon. So he said, if phi x is non geometrical polynomial in this space, this kind of space, then there exists a Russian number for which homological equation has no measurable solution. Okay, I will go to uh, another result. Uh, again, if phi x is not to geometrical polynomial and spectral radius, I mean, it satisfies that integral, if you remember, which is equal to zero, then for any sequence, I mean, sequence omega n satisfying this condition, uh, there exists a rational number such that the norm of powers of operators goes uh, is lower, I mean, uh, bound is, uh, uh, is getting by this. So, so I will say that that uh, this sequence is the lower bound to the normal powers of operators, okay? To the normal powers of operators. Uh, okay. And this uh, rational, I mean, a rational number can be Liouville's number. So Liouville's number satisfy this inequality. Okay. Here are some another result. So uh, if uh, phi x is non geometrical polynomial again, and satisfying that integral again, then uh, the spectral radius is more than, and ash is, I mean, rational number, then the spectral radius is more than one. And uh, one more result, I mean, for uh, a special set of uh, rational number we have, uh, a power pounded operator. So weighted shift operator generated by rotation is just power pounded. Okay, also here, 
some another one, but I'm going to show you uh, this question. So if you see here, okay, I will go back a little bit. So we have here a continuous function, and for this continuous function, it exists, there exists a Russian number satisfying this formula. Uh, I mean, satisfying this inequality, sorry. So uh, does, for any Russian number that exists a continuous map, I mean, continuous function such that, that I mean, we can have the same uh, inequality. So, uh, so it was showing that by Berghoff sums, I, we got uh, a positive answer. Uh, yes, we have mm, uh, for any Russian number and n sharp degrees in sequence, there exists a continuous map such that uh, this inequality holds. So, okay. And um, I'm not going to show the proof in detail because it's uh, very difficult, and especially if you discuss that the proof virtually. So it's very difficult to, to say it, to, to show it. Uh, okay, I will go to semi-group operator, and actually for semi-group operator, uh, we have that the, if the, the spectral radius, I mean spectral radius belongs to, or the spectrum, sorry, belongs to unit circle, then the resultant is can be represented by Taylor series, and the norm is equal, um, I mean the norm uh, is given by this inequality. So for semi-group operators, we have this uh, uh, theorem, trees matrix theorem. So if the spectrum inside the unit circle, then the result, then the resultant hold this inequality. And uh, if we have that the spectrum is only one point is equal to one, then we have this, uh, then we have the resultant hold this inequality. Okay. Mm, again, uh, we have uh, we studied the uh, the exponential growth of the resolvent. So, if the spectrum belongs to unit circle, then the resolvent uh, can be growing or something like exponentially here, if and only if the normal powers of operator is goes only exponentially. And we with orders and types here. I didn't define this in those uh, notations. I'm sorry, but um, I was in a hurry to do this presentation. Okay. Uh, and the, the here we have the relationship between the orders and types. Um, again, uh, if uh, operator, uh, so operator, set the resolvent of operator, I mean the norm of resolvent, is it growing um, something like this guy if and only if the norms is it holds this inequality. And for a Russian number, I mean that the resolvent, that the resolvent related to the omega shown before. So if we have something like this omega, we will have it that the uh, Norm of the resolvent goes in this. I mean, from, holds this inequality, and if the omega holds this, in, I mean, equal to this guy, so the norm of the resolvent holds this inequality. Okay, here are some references. I will. I think I didn't use all my time. Um, I'm okay. So please stay safe. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for this very interesting talk and uh, this very quick talk also. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, I was because I just came from university and I just... <laughs> Great. Uh, okay. um, so that's good because it means that we have plenty of time for questions. Please. Okay, so it's good to have longer questions. I would like and to see the references again, please. Yes, yes, yes. They were very short. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
Actually, some of those results will be published by Spornik Mathematics. Okay. There's more questions. I will be more happy. Any further questions from the audience? So I have a question actually. Could you show uh, slide 26 again? Uh, I will can't 26. see which one. 26. But please stop me when I pass it. Uh, forward, forward, uh, the other direction. The other direction. Yeah. Okay, okay. One more, one more, one more, and one more. Okay. And one more. Okay. And one more. So okay, that's okay. Thank you. So just a second, please. I this was a bit too quick for me. I have to read it once again. So that's equivalent. So psi is a real number here or integer? It's it's, it's uh, psi is an integer number. Integer. Okay. I, yes, I didn't mention. So I'm confused by the implication from the resolvent estimate to the power estimate if psi is zero. Could you mm -hmm. briefly outline why this is true? So uh, it's simply we have, you know, uh, we have here, uh, it's so, um, so I don't know, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, okay, I don't have my, uh, so there's a theorem from, uh, I will, I cannot now remember, it's just for analytic function, the coefficient of analytic function, uh, it goes like, uh, n power something, I mean psi or integer number, any integer number, I mean for psi. Uh, so, uh, they, the, so you see here, so you see here that the resolvent, the resolvent is uh, in fact uh, trivial series. Yeah, sure. So is, yes, so if the coefficients goes like uh, n power positive number, a positive integer number, of course, uh, so um, on the so the, the behavior of I mean the the, the, the function on the neighborhood will uh, uh, was something like uh, I mentioned there. It's like something here. Uh, I don't know exactly how to uh, now to. Okay. So in, in this theorem here, if psi is zero, right? So if I, for instance, consider an op a positive operator T on an LP space, right. which is Abel bounded, the spectral radius one. When if it's Abel bounded, so, uh, okay, um, okay, ah, I mean, okay, yeah, yeah. Ah. so the spectrum is in the sphere here, right? I could not hear you. Please, can you? The repeat? spectrum is a subset of the unit sphere. Is that's the assumption? The subset of what uh, spectrum? The spectrum is a subset of the unit sphere. Yes. Ah, the, ah, okay. I overlooked this assumption. Okay. Yes. And without this assumption, it's not true, right? No, 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 it's not. True. Ah, okay. Now I understand. Okay, this answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? No further questions. Okay, so then let us thank the speaker once again. Thank you. And then we'll have a short pause, a short break. And the next talk starts at 
35. So in 15 minutes. Thanks and see you then.